welcome to study with sudhir your digital classroom i am ts sudhir we are going to be today taking a look at a story called fritz written by satyajit ray easily one of the most celebrated filmmakers the world and india have seen and also a celebrated writer of both detective stories remember the character feluda he had created and also horror stories in fact fritz which is part of the isc class 11 and 12 english syllabus in the book echoes is a story in the horror genre okay it's a very riveting story an extremely interesting story and something which you would definitely enjoy okay so it's a story as i said in the thriller horror and the paranormal genre it was first uh, published in the year 1971 and it was written in bengali and the translation you are reading was written done by Gopa Majumdar in fact i read this story in the year 1993 i was reviewing a book called the penguin book of indian ghost stories and it was edited by ruskin bond another very very fascinating writer of indian fiction and fritz was part of this collection of stories in fact there are two stories written by satyajit ray in this particular book of ghost stories this is the book the story fritz by satyajit ray and in fact there was a second story by satyajit ray called anant babu's terror okay so uh, this i had uh, in fact reviewed for uh, the sunday mail and uh, it's written out here reviewed for the sunday mail in june 1993 going way back in time okay so uh, i won't be going through the entire story except the main part so first i'll tell you what the story is all about and as i said it's an interesting story it's an easy story to read in fact uh, you wouldn't feel much stress when you're reading it but when you're reading it my suggestion to you would be to kind of have a pencil in hand and mark out some of the keywords because satyajit ray actually keeps dropping a lot of hints on the way you know through the entire plot on what could be the kind of giveaways in that entire narrative and as a reader um, it's your job to kind of spot those kind of clues in a sense that he is dropping if not clues at least in some way interesting details that he is giving which will kind of make you curious as to why is the writer giving these kind of clues and whether they have some kind of a larger and deeper meaning okay so uh, we'll go through the summary and then we will discuss the different themes and aspects of the story also from an examination point of view so what's fritz all about okay first of all what is who is fritz fritz essentially is the name of a swiss doll which was presented as a gift to one of the main characters in this particular story who is jayanto jayanto and shankar two childhood friends are the main characters in the story fritz is not a human character it's a swiss doll just about 12 inches in length and it's rather strange that someone who is not one of the main characters in this story the title of the story is actually by his goes by his name which is what makes mystery horror thrillers actually that much more intriguing remember a face in the dark that you had uh, in icsc class 10 written by ruskin bond now a face in the dark it was not uh, mr oliver who was who was the main character the story was not named after him but it was named after a face in the dark you know because that makes you that kind of picks your curiosity as to what does the title really mean here also the moment you see the title fritz you makes you wonder strange kind of name what kind of a story could it be especially since it's a very indian setting and fritz is not an indian name right so this is a story of two childhood friends jayanto and shankar who travel to a place called boondi in rajasthan okay after several years the story is told in first person by shankar okay the entire story is told from shankar's point of view from his perspective jayanto had gone to boondi as a 6 year old okay now the both of them are 37 years old that is 31 years ago jayanto had gone to boondi because his father was in the archaeological department uh, his father's name was animesh das gupta and his work took him to various historical places and jayanto had as a child come to boondi he had always wanted to return to uh, uh, boondi because just to see how much the modern boondi had changed compared to the image he had in mind that's the explanation we are to given in the story that's the explanation jayanto has given to shankar which he puts in this story jayanto keeps recollecting although with a bit of difficulty because obviously what you have seen and experienced at the age of 
it's highly unlikely that you will be able to remember it after 31 years. How many of you or me actually remember what happened when we were six years old? Isn't that right? So he tries to keep recollecting, but he has difficulty in kind of jogging his memory in that sense. And the entire setting is around the circuit house, which was built during the time of the British, we are told, and it must have been at least a hundred years old. Okay, so keep remembering these kind of details. You need to use it all when you're writing your answers because that's what will enrich your answers that much more. Okay, now the central figure, as I said, is this doll called Fritz, uh, 12 inches long. It's an old man's figure dressed in traditional Swiss attire. Okay, the writer says apparently it's very lifelike and the face had a smile on it and wore a Swiss cap wore in that sense very perfect clothes. Now the doll was gifted to Jayanto by his uncle and he had bought it uh, in a village in Switzerland. Okay, now while he's gifting it, there is this bit of detail that is given which is very interesting. Uh, it's also a little strange kind of a detail. Okay, I'll just read it out. His uncle had returned from Europe shortly before Jayanto left for Bundi with his parents. The little old man, that is Fritz, had been bought in a village in Switzerland the man who sold him had jokingly said to Jayanto's uncle, and listen to this carefully, he's called Fritz. You must call him by his name, by this name. He won't respond to any other. Now, it's quite possible. Uh, I mean, why did that seller said, say this to Jayanto's uncle? One can understand it if the uncle had said this to Jayanto. You know, as a six-year-old, you want to be a little indulgent. You will kind of tease him by saying, you must call him by this name only. Otherwise, he will not respond to you. And little children may actually believe that kind of a story. But why would the seller say this to Jayanto's uncle? That seems a ra a rather strange, right? Uh, once he had Fritz, Jayanto lost interest in all his other toys. And he would play only with this particular doll and talk to him for hours. And because that doll had a nice smile, he kind of could relate to him that much better. He was not yet in school, we are told, though, even though he's six years old, he was not yet in school. Uh, uh, and the doll, the, the connection with Bundi and Fritz is that the doll, the Fritz was actually destroyed in Bundi because stray dogs tore it apart. And Jayanto uh, was obviously quite distraught about it. He felt quite upset. He says, I had brought it to Bundi. It was destroyed here. And when Shankar says destroyed, how? He says, we were sitting out in the on the lawn having tea. I had kept the doll on my side on the by my side on the grass. Uh, I was not really old enough to have tea, but I insisted. And in the process, the cup tilted and some of the hot tea fell on my pants. I ran inside to change and came back to find that Fritz had disappeared. I looked around and found quite soon that a couple of stray dogs were having a nice tug of war with Fritz. Although he didn't actually come apart, his face was battered beyond recognition and his clothes were torn. See the kind of detailing that he's giving, the, the kind of... Uh, the way he's explaining about it is almost as though he was talking about a human being, not a dog. In other words, Fritz did not exist for me anymore. He was dead. He does not say it, the doll. He says he was dead. That is Fritz was dead. It's almost as though for him, Fritz was like a human being. And he says, after that, I arranged his funeral. A funeral for the doll, for the dead doll. He buried him under that Deodha tree. He said, I wanted to actually make a coffin because Fritz was after all a European. So look at the kind of mental makeup of Jayanto even at the age of six. But I could find nothing, not even a little box. So in the end, I buried him just like that. This is an important detail and you would do well to mark it because the mystery which kind of unfolds later is related to how he has buried the doll Fritz, the dead Fritz beneath that the other tree or by the side of the the other tree so finally shankar decides to kind of dig up the place near the other tree because he thinks jento is very troubled so let's let's kind of have some kind of closure for him let's kind of unravel this kind of mystery of fritz because later on uh, in the story jento keeps thinking that fritz he's kind of come into his room walked on his quilt he looks at the 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 palm mark the, uh, the, the some kind of footprint marks and he thinks those belong to fritz so when they dig up the um, 
place near the deodar tree with the help of a gardener they discover a 12 inch long little human skeleton okay so the story ends on a rather chilling note and there are no answers as to how could a doll which was buried 31 years before become a little human skeleton hmm it's a bit like the face in the dark the in the face in the dark actually the humans did not have human features but here a doll is kind of endowed with something very human i mean it's just a an interesting contrast to that story by ruskin bot so now let's come to the themes of the story the different themes of this particular story now the story as i said is narrated in first person by shankar it's important because it provides a realistic depth into jayanto's mental makeup okay because if it was instead from jayanto's point of view it would have been kind of clouded by his own concerns apprehensions fears and beliefs which to a large extent are quite irrational okay point number 2 the other main themes of this particular story are friendship the memories of a time gone by of his childhood of beyond 30 years fear and also of the supernatural especially the way it ends at the end now throughout the story one senses there is a sense of foreboding because you almost feel something untoward is going to happen any moment now right um, and ever since actually they land at bundi jayanto is not his usual self right at the beginning of the story itself if you notice shankar's first line to jayanto is are you well you seem to be in low spirits today okay so though jayanto says oh, no 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 on the contrary i am feeling a lot better this place is truly wonderful he later on also shankar keeps feeling that jayanto is not his usual self throughout their visit to throughout their stay in bundi he is rather worried he is rather pensive about something uh, shankar of course tries to reason it out by saying that when one visits some place which one has seen as a child uh, one can kind of you know get into a shell kind of a withdraw into a shell uh, but it seems as the story goes by you realize that the past is increasingly and largely controlling jayanto's mind you know he clearly has not been able to let go of the terrible memory of the two stray dogs tearing fritz apart which leads to his death okay now let's also talk about the element of suspense that ray has introduced in the story and also his writing style now his writing style is obviously to heighten the suspense element um memory an important aspect of this particular story because jento keeps on dipping into the past and keeps on kind of talking about it was like that at that time now see the contrast look at the chairs at that time i used to feel as i'm sitting inside a, in a throne now it's the size seems okay so that keeps on adding an element of intrigue to satyajit ray's narrative and ray also the because jayanto is constantly in a sense of in, in in an element of doubt is there the reader is also kind of all the time doubting jayanto is he remembering the right thing is he kind of sure is he kind of certain about what he is thinking of what happened 31 years ago so you know the reader never 100% completely believes jayanto's version about anything right now uh, the writing style as i said you know the sense of foreboding is very very constant also very important that the setting is not in a modern city now it could have happened it could have been set in say a city like kolkata or any city in bengal given given that they seem to have come from bengal uh, or it could be in any other larger uh, historical city in uh, rajasthan like say for instance in udaipur or a jodhpur or a jaipur but the fact that it has been set in a small city a small historical town like bundi also adds its element of suspense to the entire story again the circuit house you know look at the description of the circuit house 100 years old a single story building with sloping tiled roof the roofs rooms had high ceilings and the skylights had long dangling roofs which could be pulled to open and shut them it was the way the old british architecture was there okay so circuit houses have are invariably very large you know they give you a sense of expanse and that kind of if you are not used to that sense of largeness that can make you feel a little uncomfortable and disoriented 
they don't have the kind of the closeness and the sense of comfort that a hotel room for instance would provide you with okay so they can actually be a little daunting which also seems to be the case the paranormal presence stays throughout the story what happens in the room for instance when they were sleeping the footprints on the quilt the discovery of the skeleton at the end of the story all suggest and point towards a paranormal presence now let's talk about the two principal characters that is jayanto and shankar now jayanto was shankar says was more emotional than most people and he was also obviously clearly here as the events in bundi shows troubled by the memories of what happened during his childhood especially those concerning fritz it's a little strange because he works as a journalist in a newspaper okay so uh, despite that he's not very practical about the ways of the world because when you are a journalist you kind of you know consume na- news day in and day out so you are a little more hard news uh, and practical about the ways of the world shankar is a school teacher and he in fact has a much more of a practical approach and the moment he realizes that his friend is actually being troubled he wants to take care of him and ensure that there is some kind of a closure to that kind of a problem which is why he gets a gardener in order to dig under the near near the deodha tree to see what really happens and if they can actually discover something obviously he didn't expect the discovery of a little human skeleton the other uh, um, theme is that of suppressed memories from the childhood actually seeping into adult life especially if they are of a disturbed kind of a nature so in this case jayanto's childhood has been troubled by the memories of his dear doll being torn apart by those two stray dogs uh, memory in fact memory is again a very important theme as i mentioned and it's interesting to note what jayanto himself says about memory on the fourth page he says i can't recall anything at all memory is a strange business you know uh, it also kind of conveys and is a pointer to jayanto's very muddled state of mind through the time that he stays in bundi along with shankar uh, finally race mastery as a screenplay writer and if, the, if they, this were to be made into a television uh, series for instance you would see that a lot of it is actually going back in flashback all the time but the flashback and the present the past and the present very seamlessly are woven into each other and that shows satyajit ray's class as a screenplay writer because he's so used to writing screenplays he's kind of his stories also have that very fantastic and wonderful descriptive quality about them okay now since we are talking about it as a mystery story thriller let's talk about the possibilities as to what could have really happened around fritz but before that let's read the last portion of the story the last two pages of the story just to get a sense of what really could have happened and the fact that jayanto also behaves in a very strange way he's almost perspiring the moment he, he's told that you know uh, the gardener is coming and when he's seeing the entire act i beckoned to jayanto who was still sitting at the veranda on the veranda he rose and began walking towards me as he came closer i saw the pallor on his face pallor is something a very pale kind of expression the color has drained out of jayanto's face i did hope we would find at least some part of the dog the gardener in the meantime had fetched a spade the three of us made our way to the deodha tree jayanto pointed at the ground about a yard from the trunk of the tree and said here are you sure i asked him jayanto nodded silently he doesn't say how much did you dig at least 8 inches now for jayanto to remember that he had dug about 8 inches at the age of 6 31 years ago seems a little strange and far fetched i wouldn't be able to remember something like this what happened at the age of 6 in my life right so it seems a little strange the gardener started digging the man had a sense of humor now this is satyajit ray's way of kind of lightening up even during the climax the tense climax of the story as he lifted his spade he asked if there was hidden treasure under the ground and if so whether we would be prepared to share it with him i had to laugh at this but jayanto's face did not register even the slightest trace of amusement so you see he is very very tense it was the month of october and not at all warm in bundi yet the collar of his shirt was soaked in sweat he was staring at the ground unblinkingly the gardener continued to dig why was there no sign of the doll now 
You see, the process of digging is taking place. Jayanto is obviously very tense. In fact, so tense that he's sweating even in the month of October when the weather actually in North India and Rajasthan kind of a state is actually very pleasant because the winter has not set in and the summer has kind of ended. And Jayanto made a strange sound. I quickly looked at him. His eyes were bulging. He raised his right hand and pointed at the hole in the ground with a finger that was visibly trembling. Then he asked in a voice turned hoarse with fear, What? What is that? The spade slipped from the gardener's hand. I too gaped at the ground, open mouth in horror, amazement and disbelief. There lay at our feet, covered in dust, lying flat on its back, a 12 inch long, pure white, perfect little human skeleton. What a chilling ending that Satyajit Ray brings to this story, Fritz. Now, what are the possibilities around Fritz's mysterious death, quote-unquote? Now, it's quite possible that Jento may have been misled about the position of the Deoda tree. And just like that, his memory he was kind of, you know, misled about the proportions of the chair that he was sitting in during his childhood. Number two, the uncle gifted the doll. What I told you about what he had said. Uh, it seems rather strange that the uncle should have been told like that by the person who sold it to him at the village in Switzerland. The third, in fact, an interesting character is kind of very mysteriously introduced by Satyajit Ray. The cook, the character of a cook called Dilawar, almost in passing. Now, Dilawar, he says, again, this is on the fourth page, he says, they had a good cook in the circuit house. Uh, the cook that they had in those days was called Dilawar. Jainto is saying this, he had a scar on his left cheek and his eyes were always red. But he was an excellent cook. Now, after that, there was nothing about the cook. So, it's a little strange that this kind of a cook has been introduced and the manner in which the scar on the left cheek and the eyes, the red eyes, convey something violent, convey something negative, at least not, not something very positive. So, it is Ray's way of kind of, you know, making you very feel very suspicious about what could have possibly happened. Also, the, another possibility says, is Jainto himself hiding something? Though, of course, right in the second page, we are told that he had always wanted to return to Bundi after growing up just to see how much the modern Bundi compared, had changed compared to the image he had in mind. So, why did he always wanted to return to Bundi? Just because of the doll or was there something more which he has hid from Shankar, not told Shankar, we don't know. Then fifth point, and this is something which struck me. I haven't, I mean, I haven't seen any discussion around this point. Almost in passing, what I mentioned to you right at the beginning, Jayanto's father, Animesh Das Gupta, had worked in the archaeological department. Now, what is the job of an archaeologist? It's to do with excavations. So, in a very strange way, you find this link between Jayanto and Jayanto's father because both of them get involved in the business of, in the work of excavation. Jainto's father, obviously being an archaeologist, had to excavate uh, old historical places. And Jainto also takes part in this excavation activity to find something which was buried 31 years ago. At least that's what he believes. So these are all very intriguing details because Satyajit Ray could have given any other profession, attributed any other profession to Jainto's father. The fact that he attributes an archaeologist's profession to Jainto's father also adds to the element of drama and intrigue in this particular story. Okay, so that's as far as this fascinating story. Uh, Fritz is concerned. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you enjoyed it. I would suggest that you read this story carefully. Again, mark all the important words, whatever words you think Satyajit Ray is kind of conveying something through. Please go through in detail. Also, we will do the question and answers closer to the examination in another video in detail. But definitely, this is one of the more fascinating stories that you have in your ISC syllabus for class 11 and 12. Thank you very much for watching.